Do you know the difference between a prime lens and a zoom lens? Do you want to know what lenses I use and why? Well, in this video, we're going to talk lenses and learn when to use prime and when to use zoom. So I guess you're here because you want to learn more about the differences between zoom and prime lenses. Well, right here, I do have three lenses. These are the three that I own and use with my Nikon D5600. Two of them are prime, one is zoom. So this is my 35 millimeter, my 85 millimeter, and my 18 to 140 zoom. Now there's a couple key differences between these lenses. Number one is the focal length. With a prime lens, it cannot be zoomed. So this one is an 85 millimeter, it's fixed at 85. So you can't go wider or tighter. It's gonna be fixed at 85. Where the zoom, 18 right now is the widest, but it can zoom to 140. And you may be thinking, well, why won't you just use this all the time? Well, there's more than just that as far as focal length that does matter between prime and zoom lenses. One of the major contributing factors as to why people use a prime lens, including myself, is the large aperture. Now, as we learned in the past, large aperture is a smaller number. But that means a larger opening allows more light to come in. And that factors in two positive ways. Number one, a large aperture, which in this case is 1.8, allows a shallow depth of field, which means your subject will be in focus and the background will be all blurred out. It gives a bokeh effect. So your subject will be the primary focus. Everything else behind them is typically blurry and out of focus intentionally to give the subject the main focal point. Secondly, with a large aperture, you can do more low light photography. Since it allows in more light, you don't need as much light to get a properly exposed photo. Comparing it to my zoom, and this is only for the lenses I own, they don't apply for every lens out there, there are exceptions. This has the largest aperture of 3.5. So that's a big difference right here, 1.8, 3.5. And 3.5 is when it's on the widest angle of 18. Once you do start zooming out, the aperture does increase, which means the opening gets smaller, allows in less light. Now you don't have to obviously shoot at 1.8 the entire time. You can increase the aperture, bringing it down up to usually 22. And what that does though, not only allows in less light, but if you're shooting in daytime, it doesn't really matter, but it also allows more of the background to be in focus. So you do have some flexibility with this lens as well as this one, but a bit more with a prime lens. Now there are some pros and cons with using prime and zoom lenses. So I could tell you, number one is that when it comes to composing your subject, you're gonna have a lot more versatility with your zoom lens. You can stand in one primary position and go either wide or tight based on how you want the photo to look and how close you want the subject. Where with a prime lens, you have to physically move yourself closer or further to the subject to achieve the same result. Now, in just a moment, we are gonna be doing some example photos with my subject here, Mr. Jason Voorhees. He's gonna be our subject for demonstrating the differences between zoom and prime shots and the aperture shots. Before we do that though, I wanna let you know what I use and why. So I have three lenses and for me, that's all I need. And it's really depending on what I'm shooting, what my subject is. So, just some examples. If I'm gonna do portrait photography of shooting a person, typically I want the background to be blurry. I want the person to be the main focus and to stand out and to have separation from the background. When I'm doing that, I'm primarily gonna use my prime lenses just because I could go down to 1.8 and I'm guaranteed to get that nice blurry background. If I'm gonna be doing say nature photography, going out to a social events, and I'm not really worried about lighting conditions, I'm gonna use my zoom because I either get wide shots or I could stand farther away, zoom in and get a nice tight shot. So it allows me some flexibility and versatility. Now, if I'm gonna be doing primarily low light nighttime photography, it's gonna be suitable to use my prime lenses so I can keep the aperture nice and low or nice and large, however you wanna look at it. Everyday use though, most people can get away with a zoom lens most cameras do come with a kit lens, which is a standard lens that zooms out maybe like 18 to 55. This one though, I did choose specifically for the longer zoom. 
if you're not doing portraits, not doing low light photography, you could get away with nearly all shots using this lens. If I do want to do some more creative shots, especially low light and getting a shallow depth of focus, Prime is what I use. I would say on a percentage scale, I use my 18 to 140 zoom about, I'd say 70% of the time, where I'll use my Prime 30%, only because I have to physically move closer or further away to properly compose the shot, where with the zoom, I don't have to do that. And I'm gonna demonstrate that now. We're gonna do some example shots. I'm gonna set up Mr. Voorhees here. And I'm gonna start off using the zoom lens to show you how standing in one fixed position, I could achieve different results. Then we're gonna to switch to the prime lenses and show you how I have to physically move myself closer or farther away to achieve those same results. Starting off with my 18 to 140 lens, I do have a stick here on the ground so I can remember my distance from the subject. Jason there is on the table. I'm not gonna worry right now about the aperture, it's more about the focal length. So I'm on the widest shot right now of 18. That is 18 right there. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is that my camera does have what is known as a crop sensor. So it's not a true focal length based on the lens. This has a sensor crop of 1.5. So it's gonna be 18 times 1.5. And I'll put that on the screen showing what it will be. So everything I do shoot with is gonna be times 1.5 for this particular camera. Right now, I'm gonna to go to 35, which is what my prime lens is at. And now I set it to around the 85 mark. As you saw with my zoom lens, I could stand in one spot and get different compositions, different focal lengths with just that one lens. Now I have my 35 millimeter prime lens. I'm gonna stand here in the same spot in front of the stick. Take my shot and that's all I could do. I can't zoom in or zoom out with this lens from this position. So if I wanna get a nice tight shot, I have to physically get closer. So for a composition like that shot, I had to physically get closer to the subject. So that's something you want to keep in mind if you are doing portrait photography, especially street photography with candid shots, you don't really want to invade people's privacy. So a 35 won't be suitable for shots like that. But if you are doing family members or friends or product shots like this, it's a perfect lens for that. Now let's try the 85. Now here with my 85, I'm going to stand here in front of the stick and show you how the composition looks. It's definitely a tighter shot compared to the 35. Now if I do want to get a really wide shot of Mr. Voorhees, I have to back up. I cannot zoom out because it's a fixed length of 85 times my crop sensor of 1.5. It's not even wide enough, I have to keep going even further. I'm probably outside of the camera view. But in order for me to get that wider shot, I have to physically move away from the subject. Now this lens is perfect for candid street photography because you don't have to be close to your subject to get them composed properly. And also with that large aperture, will blur out the background. Now, if I wanna get a really close tight shot, I don't have to move all that close. This is a pretty tight lens. So I could go maybe right here. And there you have it. So those are the key differences between zoom and prime is your focal length and your distance. If you wanna physically get creative, moving yourself closer or further away, prime's gonna allow you to do that. If you want to have versatility to stand in one general area and get creative with wider, tighter shots, 
zoom is going to do that. Just to briefly demonstrate the aperture, I did bring it down to 1.8, which is the largest for this lens. And you'll see the background is going to be blurred out. Then I'm going to do the next shot with the exact opposite of a really small aperture. All right, I'm going to bump it up as high as it'll go, which is 22. It's a really small opening and most of the background should be in focus. Huge difference there. So even though it is a large aperture lens, you don't have to shoot it like that. Now here's a tip for you. If you do have a lens that doesn't have a large aperture of say 2.2 or even 1.8 like my prime lenses, you can achieve similar results using whatever lens you have. There's two ways to do it. So number one is you want to have your subject as close to the camera as possible and as far away from the background as possible to achieve that blurry background. Right now where he's sitting, the background distance is roughly 20, 25 feet away. I'm going to get the camera as close as possible so that he's in focus and have my aperture as large as possible, which is 3.5. And we're going to see what the results are with that. So with that shot, it was on 18 times the 1.5 crop, 3.5 aperture, and we got a nice blurry background. So I didn't have to do much, didn't have to switch lenses. I just had to get creative with my focal length. There's one other way you could do it, especially if you're using a zoom lens. Now, when you zoom out, if I zoom out to 140, the aperture on this camera goes to 5.6. That's the lowest it'll go, which is even a smaller aperture, less blurry background. But if you shoot from a distance, zoomed in, just because of the focal length and the zoom of the lens, it will create a blurry background. I'm gonna demonstrate that for you right now. All right, so I'm back here at 140 times my 1.5 crop, 5.6 aperture. And there we go. He is the main focus, background is blurred out. So that is a way you could achieve that blurry background if you don't have a large aperture lens. I do want to thank Mr. Forgies for being such a good subject. He was quiet, patient, doesn't say a lot, but he takes some really good photos. He's a great subject. So hopefully by now you have a better idea as to which lens is the one for you and the key differences between prime and zoom. Which one should you use for yourself? It's based on everyone's individual needs. If you're going to be doing a lot of portrait or low light photography, I do recommend getting prime lenses, but you will need to get a few of them, which could get costly. I have two, one for a wider, one for a tighter shot. That's suitable for me. If you're doing everyday photography, like wildlife, social events, people, pets, stuff like that, and you need to get different distances, different focal lengths, a zoom lens, will be right for you. Especially if you're not worried about or not shooting much at night or not worried about that sharp, crisp, blurry background. But as we saw, you can still achieve it if you do get creative. Anyways, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And lastly, I'll see you behind the camera real soon. Thanks for watching.